I'm going to do some random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong. By doing these exercises, I have developed a greater appreciation for Chows. Even though they're low value, they're agile. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. This is a wind of the round indicator. We're going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, east, south, west, north, starting with east. We'll just say that we need to have a one fawn minimum. We'll say we're the dealer for each of these exercises, so we'll get 14 random tiles each time. That looks like a lot of tiles. I'm used to small tiles. These are big and chunky. But these are the right number of tiles. So for this set of tiles, I would play a half flush. We have single honors, which are very weak. You can't do anything with these with numbers two through eight as singles. You have to pair them up so that you can pung them or use them as a pair. But here we do have Pung potential and chow potential. So you need four sets in a pair. We do have some chow potential. Chows are three in a sequence, one, two, three. So we would need a two. And here's a seven, eight. So we would need either a six or a nine. Now we could use that to make a chow, six, seven, eight, but that would leave an isolated six. Or we could split this apart and use the four, six. Or we could potentially get a three of a kind, which is called a pung, and a three of a kind here, and then use this as a potential chow. So this would be one, two, three, four blocks. All we really need are more dots or to pair up. We could chow, pung, pung, chow. We just need to pair up or draw more dots. I would throw these first, play half flush. Half flush, no flowers. We have no flowers and that's a fawn. So we would have three fawn for half flesh and one fawn for no flowers. That would be a four fawn hand. And because we have chow potential, this might be a, a pretty quick hand if we could just pair up. That's how I'd play this. If you would do something different, let me know. You know what, I suppose if chows came in first, Eh, I don't know though. I was thinking we could split them out and do that, but then we have one, two, three blocks. This way, we have four. One, two, three, four. We just either have to draw into it or chow and pung based on discards. I would do it this way. Okay. We're going to go on to south round. Look at all those honors. Honors are winds and dragons. We have a pair of nine bams, a potential chow, a pair of five cracks, and some chow potential here too. South round, we're east seat. So this, if we pung it, if we get a theory of a kind for that north, we won't get score for that. So here are the options. We could play either all chow or all pung. If we played all chow, we would have one, two, three. One, two, three, let's say four. We could use that for maybe our pair. One, two, three, four blocks. We would need to draw in bams to use these as chows. 
So we would need eight, seven, eight BAMs to break that out if we played all, ch all chows. If we played all pung, we would pung here, here, and here. One, two, three blocks. So we would need to then pair up to pung. If we play all pung, it's better to have four pair at the onset. So I think what I would do is play all chow. I would hold all number tiles, hold that, get rid of those. The other option would be hold all those honors, discard these three, hold this in case we pair up, draw in bams, and push a half flush. Discard these first. Really, maybe the nine dot, since it's isolated. That would be another way to go, but that would be risky because we would have five discards, including a pair, and chow potential. So this is kind of a tough one. But all these honors here, I would be tempted to keep them. It's south round, and there's a south wind. If we pair that up, we could pung it for a fawn. These, if you pair up any dragon and pung them, three of a kind of any dragon, those are a fawn all by themselves. I think I would hold that for as long as possible, push a half flesh, discard these. If you would play all chow here, write that in the comment section below. A lot of discards. This would definitely be a push. So now we're going to go to West Round. We have a four flower. It's west round and we're in east seat so that four flower is not going to help. One fawn minimum, dragon pung. We need to pung that for a fawn all by itself. We could pung here too and maybe draw in dots. I think I would start by discarding the nine crack. See if we could get to a half flush again. Four discards, which is not bad, but we could chow, draw in dots, pung, pung. Any pairs of potential pung. And then these other dragons, if we could pair up, we could get score for that too. If we paired up in time to pung. Half flush, that's what I would push here. And that might be a little push. Last random pull, north round. Okay, for this one, I think because we have a pung in here, mixed suits, I think I probably would try for all pung. We have a pung here, pair, pair, both of those are potential pungs. 
I think what I would probably do here, we have the Pung here and then pairs in mixed suits. I would not try all Chow here, I don't think, because the Chow potential is here, here, that's it, two. I think I would definitely try all Pung and we would just have to really watch the discards and discard tiles that go down, either in exposures or discards, to ensure that we have the ability to pair up so that we could Pung. Because right now we have this Pung and then two potential Pungs. So definitely we need to pair up three more times. No, two more times. One, two, three blocks. We need four blocks, four sets and a pair. Sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. So we would have to pair up two more times. This exercise has really helped me to get comfortable with my drawn hand. Even though you pick a direction to go, you still gotta stay flexible and make decisions based on what's happening at the table. If you have a set at home, give this exercise a try and let me know if it helps you find your footing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell when you do so you get notification for when I post new videos. That way you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.